Rocket Gang, it's me, Warren, and today we're going to take a look at running Umbraco 10 on a Mac. Yes, I've got it here on a Mac. Um, but you've seen this before, haven't we? Well, we have, but without Docker this time. Let's jump on in. Okay, so now I'm on my Mac, and uh, let's get going. So, um, first things first, I need to browse to the .NET website. And the easier way to remember that is to go to dot dot net and that takes you to this page and then we're going to go to download and then as I'm on a Mac I'm going to choose Mac OS but it's also selected it for me and then depending on what uh, age or version of a Mac you have so I have a, a very old 2013 MacBook which is an Intel based chip so I need the x64 uh, SDK, but if I was on the newer kind of M1, M2 Apple silicon chips, then I'm going to be choosing ARM 64. So uh, I've already done this uh, so that we don't have to watch me go through installers. Uh, but what it does say, if I was to click it, and it's now going to add it to my downloads, so I'll just let it do its stuff. Uh, it does say to verify the install, so it just says to type in the command .net. So let's do that. I've got the terminal here. .net. Perfect. I get something out. I get some information about help and info. And if I do .net dash dash info, I get a, a lot of information here in terms of telling me about what uh, SDK we're using. So 60301 that I'm running on a Mac, uh, that it's 11.6 and where the path to the SDK is living and other various bits and pieces. So we, we know it's installed. So that's if you, step one, get .NET uh, installed and running, test it out, perfect. So the next thing to do, now we've done that, is to go to armandbraco.com and we can go to the download page and on here it says about installing Umbraco. Uh, it talks about you can do it yourself uh, by adding the package, uh, but you've got to do a little bit of scaffolding in terms of setting up a few other files and bits and pieces. So we recommend the approach of using the .NET new uh, templating engine, which allows you to scaffold projects and different types of projects uh, using the CLI. So you could create a .NET .NET new console application or a .NET new uh, class file or in our case we're going to be doing a .NET new Umbraco but for us to add that to the .NET new scaffolding template we need to say that we want to install the template pack so uh, we can do that by one visiting this link here it says we recommend using the .NET CLI so we can go and follow our documentation perfect uh, if you like me and don't time don't tend to like to read and prefer to someone to show you then we have a, a nice video from uh, Jonathan here talking about how to do this as well um, but yeah the command is in the documentation so we can literally do a copy and a paste so it's .NET new dash i short for install and then the name of the NuGet package that contains the templates for the .NET new CLI that we want to install in our case it's called Umbraco templates so let's go back to our terminal and let's just paste that in .NET new hyphen i and Broco dot templates. I've already installed it because I forgot I've already run through this, but it is telling me that it's uh, uninstalled it and reinstalled it for me. Thank you .NET. So in here, uh, it's telling me it's installed a template name called package and a project, and there's some various short names and so on. Good. Another good sign, we're in the right direction. So we can carry on reading the documentation here. We can say it says about using .NET new and Broco dash H for help or short for help. Uh, sometimes I like to be a little bit more verbose and use the dash dash and then the full name of the option or the switch. And here we can see we have a lot of configurations or switches. Uh, you can see that we can specify a specific Umbraco version that we want to install when uh, creating our project. If we want to use a git ignore or a specific connection string, or if we want to uh, use the unattended install flow and set up an email and a password so we don't have to see the installer screen. But for now, this is good. 
uh, we're all installed and we're going to go and create a project. So let's just uh, do ls just to see where we are. I'm in my home directory and let's change directory to my documents folder. And here we're going to do .net new and Braco dash dash name or we could do dash n short for name. Uh, and we're going to give it a name of our project and this is the folder it's going to create as well. So .NET new and Braco dash dash name and Braco on a Mac without Docker. Let's do that. It's creating and scaffolding the various different files for me. It's now doing a NuGet package restore and getting all the various bits and pieces that it needs from the internet available for the project to start and boot up. So it says the restore succeeded. So we can do a uh, change directory into that folder that we just created. Um, Braco on a Mac without Docker. Then we're gonna do a .NET build. Again, all this documentation and resources is already out on the internet. Follow our documentation over on rumbraco.com uh, if you need to follow along if I'm moving a little bit too fast. So, um, it says all projects are up to date for the restore. It should be now building and compiling um, the local files that we have on disk with the, the packages that we've kind of restored from NuGet on the internet. And once that's done, we will then have something that we can then say, run this and we'll have a working website. Perfect, we've got there in the end. .NET run. Uh, which is also does a build. Um, so in theory, we could have skipped out the step of .NET build, but it's nice whilst you're, you're learning and you're getting familiar with .NET and the CLI and the, the whole ecosystem. It's nice to be more verbose uh, when in this scenario. Again, so this is doing the build that we've just done before before it then says, okay, run the application for me, set up a web server locally that we can connect to and browse the Embraco back office and installer. There we go, we're getting some information or logging coming out to the console now. And it's asking me to put in my password. This is to do with the, uh, excuse me, local host SSL certification. So it's just prompting me so it says it's listening on uh, an SSL port, this one, or a, just a HTTP, HTTP port over on this one. So we'll take the SSL one and we'll copy that um, and we'll put that into Safari and paste it in. And whilst that's doing that, we can kind of see that, yeah, there's some logging going on. So it's Umbraco must install or upgrade. And here we get the new Umbraco V10 installer with its uh, kind of snazzy on branding with the rest of the, the more updated Umbraco brand at the minute. So here we can fill out the installer. So I can do Warren Buckley and Warren at umbraco.com and a password of password1234. So down here you can see the database type is SQLite. Uh, if it was running on Windows, uh, you might have um, various different configuration options. You might be able to choose local DB or specify a SQL Server connection string. So here, um, if I'm happy with this, I can just click Install. Um, but SQLite, just as a, a refresher, is a file-based embedded database. So it means that uh, we now don't need Docker anymore to run a SQL Server for us that we needed to previously do uh, link to previous video in one of these random corners um, so this is really good so this means I'm just click install and we're gonna be good to go and if you can kind of see my terminal slightly in the background you can see that here it is creating all the database tables and setting up various different things and we get the login and everything is hunky-dory it's just doing its last bits and pieces. And then once that's done, we're gonna get redirected to the back office.
perfect. Then I've got the uh, Limbraco Tour. Uh, if you're not familiar with Limbraco before, then I would highly recommend you go through this tour. But I use Limbraco quite a lot, so I, I think I know what I'm doing. So very quickly, I'm just going to show this. This definitely does work on a Mac. We're going to go and create a document type with a template. And we'll call it Home, and we'll give it a snazzy icon. If it wants to load on me. There we go, home icon, and uh, yeah, we'll add a group, and we'll call this uh, content, and we're going to add a property, and we'll call this header, and we'll choose a text box. Keep it nice and simple, existing text string, and let's make the permissions correct, and show that we can allow this document type at the root of Iron Bracker installation and click save and let's go and create our content node and we're going to call it home and we go hello from a Mac and we click save and publish and we're done aren't we? Yeah, I think we're done. Double check the login and everything is all seems to be happy. This save is taking a little bit longer than I anticipated, but we'll maybe investigate why what's going on. I'm kind of guessing it's my machine. It's very old. It's recording me talking to you and screen and running a modern-ish application and trying to record my screen at the same time. But yeah, we'll let it off. It says it's saved. Uh, we can now go and view the page. And wait for it to render. There we go. Oh, an empty page. I know what I forgot to do. Let's go back and let's go back to our template. We didn't actually say what was going to be in this page. So we could put in, I'm going to be really lazy and not put in a HTML and a head and a body. We'll, we'll, we'll be super lazy. We're just going to put a H1 in and we'll just say hello and then we'll have a H2 that has our value of at model dot header so that's the name of our property and then we'll click save so now if we refresh we get hello and hello from our Mac and let's just double check it is definitely working and hopefully sped up a little. Hello, viewers. Have a good one. Or something like that. I don't know. Copywriting is not my skill. So that worked a lot faster that time. I'm guessing some weird quirk earlier. Refresh and the change is there. Perfect. So that is uh, Umbraco running on the Mac. Really, really simple. Really easy to just get up and running. And uh, now, no fancy or complex Docker required because psh, we don't need it. Um, so to wrap out, um, I'm going to suggest a couple of things. So first things up, um, you might not want to use the terminal all the time. Uh, you might want to use an editor. So there's a couple of editors that you can choose from. So you can use a Visual Studio Code. This is kind of one of my favorite editors, in my opinion, uh, for working with Umbraco on a Mac. So I could use that, or if you prefer a more fully fledged uh, IDE, um, then the people from JetBrains and ReSharper have made Rider, which is a cross-platform um, IDE. So you can now do C Sharp .NET development on a Mac. So that's good. Or if you really like Visual Studio and you like Visual Studio proper, um, then there is Visual Studio for Mac, which does .NET development, but also along with iOS and Android and all the other xaml type things that are out there um so that's it um i don't think there's much more to add so happy hacking have fun and i look forward to your next build built on a built on a Mac. built on a mac have fun and until next time 